All right, so if you just finished watching my last video, I told you it was the final one in the series. I can't end there. There's just a little bit more I have to tell you. So part five of World War I, and this is, this is going to be quick. We're picking up right where we left off, all right? This is European history. My name is Paul Sargent, and uh, gosh, I just finished recording the other one, and I just, I just can't stop at this point. I absolutely can't, all right? We talked about the Paris Peace Treaty and some of the things that happened there. There are some other peace treaties that go on. And, and, and here's where like, you have some real changes because Eastern Europe changes immensely. Germany and Russia lose a ton of territory. Romania gains territory. Um, you have new states which are created. Finland, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania. I'm going to show you a map. Don't worry. Poland. Czechoslovakia, Austria, Hungary, and Yugoslavia are all created at this meeting to try and go along with this idea of national self-determination. The problem that they find though, especially when you get down in the Balkans, like Yugoslavia area, um, Czechoslovakia, um, is that is that there are it's impossible to give every ethnic group their own country. There's too many ethnic ethnic groups, they're too intermingled. There's, ah, it's just impossible. They do the best they can. So, for example, Czechoslovakia is going to combine the peoples of the, it's going to combine the Czechs and the Slovaks into one country. They're also going to include some Germans on the western side, which is going to be an issue because Hitler's going to want to incorporate those Germans into a larger German state. Yada yada yada. World War II. You guys get the idea. Basically, what ends up happening is in every European state, there's some sort of a minority group that's there. The idea of a national self-determination model is flawed because of where the people live and who they identify with. All right. The Ottoman Empire is dismembered. It is no more. Boy, this thing's been around forever. This thing uh, toppled Constantinople. I mean, it's been around for, for centuries. And what about those people that they ruled? Well, they had been promised independence, but they end up being mandates. And the idea of mandates is this. I, I kind of like the, I don't like, that's the wrong word. Um, it's, they don't want them to be colonies. So they say, hey, you're not going to be colonies. You're going to be mandates. And mandates are areas which are not colonies, but which, were, which are overseen by European powers. So they're basically colonies, but they're not colonies. They're mandates. France gets Lebanon and Syria, um, and Britain gets Iraq, Iraq and Palestine. Um, now I, you know, tongue in cheek with my with my students, I always look at this and say, obviously, this has solved everything in the region. We will never see another problem in Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, or Palestine for the rest of you know human history, which of course is completely wrong. You guys get that. So there's a lot of attacks on the settlement. Um, a lot of people are unhappy with it. The biggest consequences here are this. The League of Nations is does not include Germany because they weren't invited, does not include Russia because they're communist, does not include the United States, who's the emerging, who's an emerging huge power in the world because the Senate doesn't ratify it, and doesn't include Britain because Britain very quickly kind of steps out and says, you know what? We've got colonies to worry about. We've got an empire. We got to do that. But here's the big thing. After this war, all of these shaded in areas are moved. Okay. Um, Schleswig is given up to Denmark. Boy, that goes all the way back to the German um, movement, uh, unification movement. Um, uh, Alsace Lorraine go back. Um, Yugoslavia is created. Romania gets some more territory. Austria and Hungary are finally divided into two countries, not one ruled by, you know. Um, Czechoslovakia is here. Uh, Russia loses all of this territory that they gave up in the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk, and it's all put into their own things. And here's Poland. And notice, if you will, this little thing they call Poland's Corridor to the Sea. Right? Give them an outlet so they don't have to go through Germany in order to get to trade. Well, look what it does. This is Germany, and this is Germany. See a problem? Someone at some point, maybe named Hitler, might want to you know, unite those people. So there's problems. Right? Here's a look at the Middle East very quickly um, to give you an idea. 
The French has given mandates over this area here. The British has given mandates over all of this area here. Um, and uh, yeah, more on that later. Okay, so that basically takes us through World War I, starting in 1914, um, ending in all of our discussions in 1921, simply because of the Civil War in Russia, um, but mostly ending in 1919 with the peace treaty um, at Versailles. So anyway, that's it. Uh, sorry, I had to throw on a few more minutes. My name's Paul Sargent. Um, and this is European history. And thanks for watching. Um, in the next chapter, we're going to take a look at the 1920s and 1930s, the rise of dictatorships in the, in, in, in the wake of World War uh, I and how they lead to World War II. Have yourselves a great day.